What's up everyone? Today, we are going to put focus on quarter 3, week 4, which deals with the nervous system, specifically on the major divisions, parts, and functions. You're still with me, Sir Janus. This time, let us explore the concepts that comprises living things and environment. For this quarter, there are four major chapters. First one is on parts and function. Second one deals with heredity. For the third one deals with biodiversity and evolution. And lastly deals with ecosystem. The K-12 curriculum emphasizes on spiral progression. This time let us look on the development of concepts on parts and function from grade 3 down to grade 10. So let's have a quick look. For grade 3, the main focus for this one will be on the uh, familiar external parts and you have also learned about the characteristics of living things that distinguish them from non-living things. For today's session objectives, first one, we have identified the two major divisions of the nervous system. Second one is to describe each part of the major divisions of the nervous system. And for the third one, realize the importance of the parts of the nervous system in maintaining human life. Now let us explore the human nervous system, its major divisions parts and its specific functions. The nervous system is divided into two main divisions. The first one is known as the central nervous system or simply CNS, which serves as the main processing center for the entire nervous system. The second division is known as the peripheral nervous system or PNS, 
This connects all the central nervous system to the organs and limbs. The central nervous system is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord. It is where the interneurons receive and pass on the messages. The brain, as we all know, is the control center of the body, and without it, man will not survive. The brain consists of 10 billion neurons that control everything a person does, such as thoughts, movements, memory, and senses. The brain is a moist and spongy organ with an average of 3 pounds in weight. It has three main divisions. The first one, the cerebrum, is a large upper part of the brain that controls activity and thought. For the second one, the cerebellum, is the part under the cerebrum which controls posture, balance, and coordination. The last major division of the brain is known as the brain stem. It controls automatic functions such as breathing, digestion, heart rate, and blood pressure. It is the part that connects the brain to the spinal cord and controls automatic functions. Another organ that composes the central nervous system is known as spinal cord. This serves as a gateway or passageway for signals between the brain and the rest of the body. It also controls simple musculoskeletal reflexes without input from the brain. Now let us proceed to the next major division of the nervous system which is known as the peripheral nervous system or PNS. The PNS is made up of 12 pairs of cranial nerves in the body that emerge from the brain that connect with the eyes, ears, and nose. It comprises of the cranial and spinal nerves. The peripheral nervous system contains the cranial nerves which have mostly sensory nerve fibers. Some of these fibers are made up of sensory and motor nerve fibers. We all know that the central nervous system controls the majority of the activity of the body. So you might be wondering what does the peripheral nervous system do? And what part does it play inside the human body? The PNS connects the central nervous system to the organs, limbs, and skin. It also allows the brain and spinal cord to receive and send information to other areas of the body. It also carries sensory and motor information to and from the central nervous system and lastly, it also controls and regulates involuntary body functions such as heartbeat and breathing. The peripheral nervous system is further subdivided into two, somatic and autonomic. Somatic nervous system is associated with the voluntary control of body meaning these are movements that can be controlled. It has two main parts. First one is the spinal nerves. These are the nerves that of course are located on the spinal column. These are the nerves that carry motor and sensory signals between the spinal cord and the body. Second one is the cranial nerves which is the nerve fibers that carry information into and out of the brain stem. Another subdivision of the peripheral nervous system is known as autonomic nervous system and this system is associated with the involuntary control of body movements. It also has two subdivisions which is known as the parasympathetic nervous system and the other one is the sympathetic nervous system. It is important to remember that sympathetic nervous system is activated when the body is in a dynamic role or stress, which leads to increased heart rate, breathing, dilation of pupil, and sweating. This also is known as the E division because this is activated during exercise, excitement, emergency, and embarrassment. To restore the body to normal or relaxed mode, the body activates the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, 
here is a difference between parasympathetic to sympathetic nervous system. As you can see, the parasympathetic nerves uh, main function is for rest and digest, feed and breed, whereas for the sympathetic nerves, it is focused on fight or flight. With regards to the pupils, parasympathetic constrict the pupils, whereas the sympathetic dilates it. Parasympathetic slows the heartbeat, sympathetic increase the heartbeat. Constrict airways, relax airways, and so on. These two balances the activity in the body. Before proceeding to the next topic, let us have a quick review on the divisions of the nervous system. We have discussed that the nervous system is divided into two, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord, whereas the peripheral nervous system is further subdivided into somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is comprised of the cranial and the spinal nerves, whereas the autonomic nervous system is composed of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Each of these have their own specific functions. You might be wondering, how does your nervous system process information? Now let us have a quick look on how the nervous system reacts and how it takes action. You might be wondering what are the role of neurons in the nervous system. Neurons, or also known as nerve cells, these are the fundamental units of the brain and the nervous system. These are the cells responsible for receiving sensory input from the external world, for sending motor commands to our muscles, and for transforming and relaying the electrical signals at every step in between. There are three types of neurons. The first one is the sensory neuron, second one is the interneuron, and the last one is the motor neuron. So these three are responsible for the sensory input, the interneuron, and of course the motor output. The first type is known as sensory neurons. It is also called as afferent neurons. This type of neurons transmit impulses from sensory receptors toward the central nervous system. So for example, when you touch a hot surface with your fingertips, these are the types of neurons which will be firing and sending off signals to the rest of the nervous system about the information they have received. They are prevalent or present in the sense organ, hence the term sensory neuron. The second type is known as the motor neurons or the efferent neurons. This transmits impulses from the CNS to the rest of the body. So these neurons transmit impulses from the spinal cord to skeletal and smooth muscles and so directly control all of our muscle movements. The motor neurons of the spinal cord are part of the central nervous system and connects to muscle glands and organs throughout the body. The third type is known as interneurons or association neurons. From the word itself, or as the name suggests, interneurons are the ones in between. They connect the spinal motor and sensory neurons. They also serve as a method or a passageway of transferring signals between sensory and motor neurons. They can also communicate with each other forming circuits of various complexity. To sum up today's session, 
we must always remember this key concept. When a receptor, such as an organ, perceives a stimulus, the impulse is sent to the brain via sensory neurons. The sensory neurons transmit now the information from one nerve cell to the other using or via the interneurons. As the message reaches the brain, it processes the information, decides what to do, and commands an effector such as a muscle or an organ to respond. The impulse is carried out or sent through the motor neurons. That's it for today's session. Thank you for watching. I really do hope that you have learned something from this video. And most importantly, please don't forget to drop your comments below. You can suggest topics for our next video. And please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell for the notification so that you will be updated for my future posts. Hansinatics out!